All right there, everyone. Austria shuts down mosques and expels dozens of foreign-funded imams in a display of renewed national sovereignty. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. Well, it does appear that Austria is, in fact, taking back their nation one step at a time. And this one is a particularly impressive step. Austria will be closing down seven mosques and expelling 60 Turkish-funded imams as part of a crackdown on Islamic extremism within the borders of their nation. Chancellor Sebastian Kurtz recently made the announcement that they were dissolving a radical group known as the Arab Religious Community, which runs, I believe, six of those uh, mosques, and they will be deporting its members. Overall, there, are, there will be upwards of about 150 people expelled from Austria under this measure alone. In fact, one of the mosques, I believe this one was in Vienna, the uh, worshippers showed up on Friday, Islam's holy day, and there was a sign on the front door that just said closed. Uh, I mean, this place is now officially out of business. It's done. Austria is not fooling around here anymore. Uh, now, this, uh, shall we say, is the enforcement side of a law that Austria passed back in 2015, which banned foreign funding of religious groups and requires all Muslim societies to have what the law calls a positive fundamental view towards Austria's state and society. And of course, you know, that seems reasonable enough if you're going to take advantage of the culture and the freedoms and the uh, economic opportunities of a nation you could at least acknowledge the blessings that such a nation uh, is giving to you. And Sebastian Kurz, who's now uh, Chancellor of Austria, when he was campaign campaigning last year, he had promised to begin vigorous enforcement of immigration law as part of his uh, party's platform, which is the main center-right uh, People's Party. And of course, if you remember the People's Party, they're known as the OVP, along with the so-called far-right Freedom Party, the FPO. They won an overwhelming 60% of the vote in Austria's national elections a few months back, back in uh, uh, October of 2017. It was just an absolutely stunning move to the right. Now, the vice chancellor, Heinz Christian Strach, who's been the very telegenic and very charismatic, eloquent leader of the Freedom Party, the so-called far-right FPO. Uh, he's been the leader there since, I believe, 2006. He said that the closing of the, the, these mosques and deporting the Islamic radicals, it's just the beginning. We ain't seen nothing yet. Stringent border security and enforcement is now the unambiguous policy of the nation of Austria. Austria is taking their nation back from Brussels and the EU elite. Now, of course, Turkey has responded. Ankara has declared this is nothing less than a blatant example of Islamophobia. They're saying this is, this is just racism and an anti-Islamic move on the part of Austria. We have to remember that Austria, it's a nation of about 9 million people, and they have about 600,000 Muslims, and about half of those Muslims are Turkish. And so the Turkish president, uh, Erdogan, condemned these measures as uh, I believe he called him irresponsible. He faulted uh, Chancellor Kurtz of being immoral in his actions and policies. Nevertheless, uh, I think that Turkey and the, the wider Islamic regions of the world, they're going to have to start getting used to this. Again, as Vice Chancellor Heinz Christian Strach has said, this is just the beginning. And I don't think he's just talking about Austria either. What we have to understand here is that Globalization is coming to an end in much of the European continent, and with it, the whole notion of multiculturalism is dying as well. We have to remember that under globalization, Islam was invited into Europe by our secular globalist elites under the whole notion of multiculturalism. So what is multiculturalism? Multiculturalism is the globalist notion that all cultures are equally valid, equally legitimate. And this, of course, is because globalization is by definition transcultural. It, it's transnational and therefore relativizes all nations and cultures to equal status in relation to itself. And so globalism, by its very nature, turns nations on their head when it comes to immigration. Instead of immigrants learning to accommodate themselves to the culture to which 
they've emigrated, which is what we've been doing for thousands of years. Instead, under globalization, the host culture is now being forced to accommodate itself to the immigrants, right? I mean, you've got to get that because I think it shows why there is such a mass backlash against globalization when it comes to immigration. For thousands of years, immigrants would have to learn to accommodate themselves to the culture to which they've emigrated. But under multiculturalism, uh, now the host culture has to learn how to accommodate the immigrants. This is what leaders of the National Front in France love to say over and over again. Is it France that has to adapt her principles for the immigrants? Or is it the immigrants who must adapt their customs to the rules of this country? Right? And so in light of this, what is Austria doing here? Is this just an example of blatant Islamophobia and racism as the Turkish government is accusing of them? Is that what this is? Well, you see, you can only assert that if you ignore, if you turn a blind eye to immigration taking place within the context of multicultural globalization. You see, I, I think this is very important to understand here. Austria is having to respond to a decades-long globalist context that created the social conditions, conditions of non-assimilation among Muslim populations. And there was no assimilation because multiculturalism said all cultures are inherently equal, which is a product of globalism because globalism is, by definition, transcultural. And so all of this is to say that they're dealing with, we're not dealing with cheap racist Islamophobia here, as Ankara is accusing Austria of. This isn't cheap racist Islamophobia. This is nothing less than Austrians reasserting sovereignty over their own nation culture and traditions. And as such, it's Austria that is securing and safeguarding the future of a distinctively European civilization. And as such, they are calling out the absolute lie of multiculturalism. I mean, let's be blunt. If Austrian culture were not a good and indeed superior culture, why then does it have so many immigrants? I mean, the same can be said for Europe as a whole. And so Austria, as well as Hungary and other European nations, they are, in effect, having to clean up the gigantic mess that decades of multiculturalism have left within Europe. And they're doing an amazing job of it. And of course, they're not alone. Uh, Matteo Savini, the vice prime minister of Italy, the leader of the League, uh, formerly known as the Northern League, Lega Nord, He's stating openly that Italy will be issuing similar measures on immigration enforcement as Austria is doing. Uh, of course, uh, Gert Wilders of the Dutch Party for Freedom has made the extended argument that Islam is intrinsically and innately unfit for Western civilization because uh, it's philosophically opposed to post-enlightenment and democratic categories of thought and governance. Uh, Switzerland, back in 2009, passed a referendum to alter their constitution so as to ban the construction of all minarets within their nation. And we often forget that that referendum passed by 60% of the vote. Pretty overwhelming margin. The uh, National Front in France has called for a similar nationwide ban on minaret construction. Now, of course, Austria has a special place in all this, um, historically, uh, that is, with the 17th century Battle of Vienna and the, uh, the Ottoman attacks there. So we have to understand that, you know, against the historical backdrop of very real, very violent hostility towards European civilization by Islamic soldiers, there is this general sentiment that what they once tried to do with swords, Islamic societies are now doing with immigration. And the globalist devoted EU is letting them do it precisely under the guise of multiculturalism. Well, no more. Austria has begun taking their nation back, reasserting sovereignty over their borders, their customs, their traditions, their culture. And as such, they are joining. Indeed, in many ways, they are leading an ever-growing coalition of nations dedicated to protecting, preserving, and indeed perpetuating a renewed and revitalized European civilization. 
As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on that Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.